Greetings. My name is Jeff Jordan. I am deaf and I use American Sign Language. You may be watching and those who are hearing can hear my voice. Well, that's my wife's voice and she's interpreting for me so that you, those who are hearing, can watch and understand my message. It's really wonderful to have an interpreter. It's such a blessing to make communication flow smoothly. The deaf use sign language. And I really appreciate my wife who is helping to interpret and communicate. My wife's name is Melissa. Anyway, I'm a deaf pastor and I pastor a deaf church. I've been pastoring now 24 years. And I'm happy to help with the World Church. Specifically with the General Conference. I have been working as an Associate Coordinator for Adventist Possibilities Ministries. Adventist Deaf Ministries International is a part of APM. I'm an Associate with under Larry Evans. I use American Sign Language. Did you know that there are different sign languages all around the world? In France, they use French Sign Language. There's Mexican Sign Language. And there's um, Russian Sign Language. There's over 400 known different sign languages all around the world. And just as there are different cultures around the world, the deaf are among their own people group, their own culture. The World Church has recognized specific people groups and the deaf are among the last people group to be reached and they're a challenge it's a challenge to reach them because of the specific way they communicate which is visual visual language and the visual communication using signs sign language so I'm really excited to share with you all this need and the possibilities of deaf people and that they can be utilized to be involved with ministry all around the world. There's about 70 million, 70 million deaf people around the world. Now, if we were to include those who are hard of hearing or those who have lost their hearing later in life, including the deaf, so this would be varying hearing losses, then we're talking about 466 million deaf people worldwide. Those who have lost their hearing, okay, later in life, so their hearing, those who are hard of hearing, they depend upon closed captions or subtitles to follow spoken language. And then of course they're dependent upon technology, whatever audio device that might be, maybe a hearing aids or cochlear implants. So, the needs are different. I'd like to share with you about a young boy who grew up in an Adventist church. 
His family was hearing, and fortunately, they learned sign language so they could communicate with him. Communication is so important, and learning the language was so important. And the family was Adventist, and he grew up going to Adventist church, but everything was spoken. All the music, inspirational preaching, and this deaf boy didn't benefit from any of it because he couldn't hear. The boy's mother became very concerned. She didn't know what to do. The church saw this was important and they tried to come up with what a plan of something to do. There were two young church members, young ladies that wanted to be involved and to be involved with ministering to the deaf. So they both took sign language classes and they learned how to communicate and they started to sign and they became friends with the young boy. The church also was fortunate that a professional interpreter lived very close to the church and she heard about this young deaf boy and she volunteered willingly to come every Sabbath and interpret for the young boy in church. And every Sabbath, through interpreting, the young boy was able to understand what was being spoken. At the age of 13, he took Bible study classes for baptism. And he accepted Jesus as his savior. He was baptized much later, 10, 15 years later, he's still in the church as a Seventh-day Adventist deaf pastor, pastoring to deaf people. He often will say, if it wasn't for the church's interest in him and providing an interpreter, he would not probably be in the church today. That's a scary thought, isn't it? You may wonder who that boy is. That young boy is myself. This is part of my testimony. I'm in the church today because of their interest in me and providing communication. Do you know there's a lot of deaf people like me in the world that are left out. And of this number of people, there is only 2% who know of Jesus and have accepted him as their savior. What about all the rest? It's a large number of people. Adventist Deaf Ministries International, ADMI, is here to help you to become educated, become aware, and to accept and understand deaf people. We have three, what's known as the three A's. A, to become aware, to become aware of the need that there are deaf people right in our communities hidden but unreached. The second day is acceptance, recognizing that deaf people have their own unique culture and accepting them. The last day is action. It means that we must take action in reaching and reaching the deaf and letting the deaf people become involved 
in ministering to their own people group. The three A's. You can study and find out more information about these three A's on our website. You look under APM. Again, that's Adventist Possibilities Ministry. Click on the About link. You will see the 3A strategy. Click on that and it will show seven different ministries. Under the seven different ministries, there will be a tab that says the deaf and hard of hearing. It is there that you will find a lot more information. I encourage you to become involved in working with the deaf. We can work together in reaching the global deaf for Jesus so that Jesus can come. I want to show you what it looks like here. Adventist Possibility Ministries. A lot of great information in this manual. It also includes talking about the KPI, Key Performance Indicators. That means who's responsible, what are you to do, the KPI has guidelines, which include spiritual growth, growth, leadership, mission outreach, all these very important steps. Again, all of this is found under uh, Adventist Possibility Ministries. I gave you, let me give you an example. I've been working on providing global evangelism but it wouldn't be just from one speaker because it involves many different sign languages we will use a few speakers who will be preaching the gospel in their own sign language so we are working on this big project also spiritual growth how can we help in this area of spiritual growth? Well, we have the Hope Channel Deaf. If you look under the Hope Channel, Hope Channel Deaf, you'll see different programs already there. Some that have included some that include captioning. Some programs are in different sign languages. And this is one way we can provide continual spiritual growth. Again, the challenge is communication. There are so many different, uh, there's so many deaf people around us and people don't know their language. And because there's no way to connect with them because there's no one learning their language, there is a great need for information, spiritual things to encourage them as they so that they can grow so that they can become spiritually stronger and so with this comes the need and um we're so happy that the hope channel is an outlet that we can do this in and helping to provide more information in sign language We also have um, a website that provides on our app, um, a, like a week of prayer in sign language on our Adventist Deaf Ministry International website. Reading materials need to be done in easy English. And because Spoken language is not their first language. Sign language is deaf people's first language, and it's not the same as spoken language, whatever their language is, like in English. 
they are not able to understand English because it's their second language. And they need this information communicated to them in sign language. This can be done whether they meet in a group and someone is able to lead them in a Sabbath school with sign language, but also providing programs like the 10 days of prayer and having a program, having this um, done in sign language. Also would like to provide leadership uh, opportunities to teach the deaf that they can become pastors, they can become elders and deacons, treasurers, they can become greeters, they can also help with potluck. There's so many things that they can, but it's going to be based on their spiritual gift. And I encourage you to take the time to invest in the deaf in your church, in your community. Seek to help them understand their gifts, their spiritual gifts. Encourage them to want to be involved. With this, they will see that they are valued and that they belong to the church. I also want to let you know that it's wonderful that there are interpreters and providing interpreters to communicate between the deaf and hearing, especially if there was a special event that was given, whether it was a cooking class or a special um, meeting. Provide an interpreter so the deaf can be a part of that. And when you understand that the deaf have their own language and culture, then you would, it, you would understand and see how it is important for them to have their own time together as a culture group. And because they share the same language and culture, it is with this that they then grow. It's a rich experience. So let them be themselves if they need time to be together. For example, if you had a set for Sabbath school time, if you have several members who are deaf, I encourage that you let them meet on their own. It's their own level of understanding and they can use their language. They can take their time to discuss and it's easier for them to participate. If they are with the hearing, anything that is done in that setting, they get behind very quickly. And they're not able to participate because things are spoken faster than they can actually um, raise their hand to, to try to be a part of. It goes much too fast for them to keep up. So with this understanding, it would be important to let them have their own time together and empower and train um, a deaf person to be a leader. So I'd like to share this verse with you, Revelation, in Revelation, the first angel's message, the first angel flying in the air. Worship him. And it says to reach the eternal everlasting gospel to every people, language, and nations, and tribes. There are two key words that I want you to be aware of. Language, preaching the gospel to every language. It doesn't say specifically spoken language. So this would include sign language too. The gospel is to be reached even to the deaf using their language, sign language. It also says people. Again, people, people group, not just hearing people. This includes the deaf as well. I'm really, really excited to share all of this with you. There is hope and deaf people need to hear, not hear with their ears, but with their eyes. This much needed message of hope Jesus has already come to save everyone, including the deaf. 
they are dear people. And he treasures them and he loves them too. I'm excited to share this with you today. Let me know how things are going. I'm excited and look forward to hearing what might come from your involvement with the deaf and hard of hearing for Jesus.